Welcome to our conversations with AI leaders in Africa. My name is Zenzele Lovu. I am the head of research at Machine Learning Africa. Please check out our upcoming event, the AI in Healthcare Summit. You can register for free on aiinhealthcare.co.za. Thank you. Hello everyone and, and thank you for joining um, Zanzela and myself again. Uh, we've been uh, offline for a few weeks. It's that time of the year with massive project delivery and I always talk about end of year fatigue at this time of the year. But it's lovely to again meet up with a very special guest. And um, our guest today is somebody who works in, in the AI space. And, and, you know, like we always say, we, we love to feature and speak with people here in South Africa, in our local market, working in the smart technology era, doing amazing things. And um, our guest is also working within the, the shopping experience or shopping space, which I'm quite keen to to hear more about. Uh, but Zanzela, let me ask you to, to introduce uh, our debt to us and, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you so much, uh, Johan. Um, indeed, we're back and uh, welcome to our conversations. Uh, today, our guest is um, Adit Mehta. Um, Adit is the co-founder and chief technology officer at Cap AI and Moonshop. And uh, Cap AI is an artificial intelligence company that focuses on providing AI consulting services and Moonshop helps organizations to open autonomous stores. Um, I, I'm looking at, uh, forward to hear more about uh, the, the autonomous uh, stores. Um, Adit, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, we welcome you to our conversations with AI leaders in Africa. Thanks for having me, guys. Good to be here. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I did, um, to start with, maybe give us a brief about uh, who you are and, and, and maybe a little bit more about uh, Cap AI and, and Moon, uh, Moonshop. Sure, cool. So um, I've, uh, I've got a background in industrial engineering and I, I, I didn't quite, uh, I worked a bit in the mining and manufacturing industries and didn't quite enjoy it. Um, but so I pivoted my career very quickly into like the data science and AI space. Um, I think it's worth mentioning I am actually uh, like relatively young. So I'm still, yeah, I'm, I'm 27 years old. And so I've been working right. in this AI space for about almost five years now. Um, and I've basically been through like a number of different journeys uh, in this time. And so I'd like basically started off my career in AI and data science working as a data scientist. So on the ground, um, writing a lot of code. And uh, I was working for APSA for about three years. And I had a, an accelerated journey to leadership over there. And um, at one point, I even then uh, took over to leading the AI team at, uh, at the bank. Um, but there was always this entrepreneurial itch that I had in me that I was looking to scratch. And uh, Peter, who was my partner and the CEO of Cape AI, uh, was basically trying to, him and I have been were, were linking up for quite a while before I said, okay, you know what, there's there's something here. Let's 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 take the jump and let's see how it goes. So not your not your traditional entrepreneur in sort of taking on risk where it's like my money that I've been putting up, but uh, basically taking yeah. the taking the leap and sort of leaving the comforts of corporate and what I had known uh, to something completely unknown. Um, and so I've been with KPI for just over a year and a half now. And um, and it's been amazing. And uh, even at KPI, I've sort of shifted roles quite quickly because we're we're a fast growing company, and there's a lot of flux in our environment. So I joined KPI initially as their lead data scientist, and um, earlier this year, at about April, I took on the position of CTO to start to grow the business as we scale. Um, 
So to get into what we do at Cape AI, uh, Zenzela, you already touched on it, but basically we've got like two pillars to our business model. The first being uh, Cape AI Consulting, which is uh, consulting in its traditional sense, but with the focus on data science and AI. And what we do is we have clients who are who range from like small to large uh, corporates who we do work for, and we solve problems for them using AI and machine learning. And so that's delivering basically full-on tech, uh, technology solutions. The second part of our business is our ventures business. And with our ventures business, what we're doing there is we essentially develop productizable AI. Um, and with entrepreneurship being one of the core values of the company, what we do is we actually intend to have all of these ventures, these spin out into becoming business entities of their own. So till today, we, we basically have incubated four, um, four different ideas, three of which have spun out. And what, I'm, what I mean by spun out is they're running independently with their own founding teams. They've managed to get funding um, and they, they've basically registered as their own business entities. Um, and then Moonshop, which is our baby, has not yet spun out, but it's in the process of actually going through a spin out. And um, yeah, it's a, it's it's like a very unique, well, not unique, but it's it's been an interesting business model to to find myself in, um, quite different. Uh, and then just one thing to mention, like we we are also like so far like a sort of self funded business, so we we've been running to date with sort of no VC capital. Um, no debt. And I think that that's one of the things that makes this business interesting, brings about its own challenges, but also it, it's it's in line with us trying to just be a lot more like sustainable with how we grow this business. Wow. I did. Um, you said so many exciting things. I, I also worked for one of the big four banks, not the red one, um, the green one. <laughs> and uh, what, maybe my first question for you and, and for if you think of our viewers, if because I think there are so many people who have obviously great skills, um, ambition to do something on their own or something outside of this wonderful comfort zone of a full-time job and all the benefits with it. But but going from working for an APSA, which is an incredible company, to, to doing what you're doing now, was it like a massive change, massive mind shift? And, and maybe a, the, the second question in line with that is what would you – advise other people who might have learned a lot in these big banks or to telcos or others who want to go on their own i almost want to say what are the things you wish you knew that you know now when you started off the journey right yeah it's a it's a, it's a question i get asked a lot you and I've, I've reflected a lot so i'm um, definitely like my, my time at apso was amazing and i got to work with really smart people you're working in a space that is um, resourced very well, right? So, for example, from an AI perspective, if you need to spin up, you know, a whole lot of like infrastructure to train a whole lot of models, there isn't necessarily like restrictions there. Um, and then, from a personal perspective, of course, there is the comforts that come with working in a big corporate. Um, but to your first question around like what was that shift like? Um, it was definitely like I, I thought that I psyched myself up and mentally prepared myself for moving into a, a startup. Um, and of course, the experiences that came with that were, when you, when you love it, it's a very different story. And so there were a couple of things, right? The first thing is um, when you move from a well-established company, whether it's a corporate or not, uh, into a startup, you must be comfortable with chaos. And, and I, I mean this in its most sincere form. Um, <laughs> But your mindset has to shift from, okay, this is chaos and this is a problem to this is chaos and this is an opportunity to create structure. So for me, like in my initial, I think like the early few months of joining KPI, I was still very much caught in this, okay, guys, there's problems and it's annoying me and why are we not getting these things right? Only for me to realize after being in the space for a while that, hey, if things are not right, there's no one holding you back go and propose a way forward, go and put some structure, put some processes into place. So that's the first thing that I would actually advise a lot of people is if you're going to shift to a smaller company and to a startup, especially in the AI space, like just prepare, prepare your mind for chaos, but also go in with the, with the mindset that you can effect change. There isn't a hundred step chain of command and process for you to follow to, you know, get budget approval and make something happen. Um, that's the one thing. I'm going to add a few other things before I get to that, what I wish I knew, right? 
So I think that if there's one thing that was uh, I did quite consciously when when making the shift is I had to ask myself like what's important to me, right? And I think that very often, um, especially I guess for for young young techies in a market that that is really attractive to them nowadays, is you the grass always seems green on the other side, right? And um, my 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 biggest thing is that the grass is greener on the other side, provided you go and nurture it on the other side. So for me, at the time of like you know thinking that I've got this entrepreneurial itch and I want to do something different, I had to ask myself, okay, what is important to me? And uh, the things that stood out was okay, um, autonomy. So having the freedom to sort of create and do um, that was important to me, and influence like having influence on a large group of people and creating something from the ground up so these were things that are important to me and when i had made the jump uh to 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 cape ai those are things that are not necessarily there by design but you have to then like make that grass greener am i making sense whereas when you're sitting in your current job you're like oh my word look at these guys at startups they seem to be having the best time of their lives and then there's people at startups who are like, oh my word, people in corporates are having the best time of their lives. Mm -hmm. And so I would actually advise a lot of young uh, people who, who find themselves in this position to, to, challenge, uh, to challenge that mindset and to actually that's really important to you um, because the grass is not greener on the other side, but you've got to really work to make it greener. Um, yeah, that, that's something I guess I would tell myself uh, now that I know because I only learned that by getting into my new garden, if I can go with this analogy, going mm. in by, into my new garden and saying, okay, guys, we got we to gotta do some work here. Yeah, yeah. That's a good answer. Thank you. Z? Th th thank you. Thank you, Adit, for, for, for sharing uh, the, those advices. Um, maybe, maybe to talk about uh, artificial intelligence uh, adoption. Um, I was actually reading... Um, a research report by uh, Safri Cloud, I think sometime last week, uh, about the challenges um, that uh, business executives face in adopting uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, I think out of uh, 1,000 uh, people that we, we surveyed, uh, I think uh, more than 50% uh, state that um, the lack of uh, internal skills um, and also the, 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 the costs actually of uh, third party services are the major challenges uh, when it comes to the adoption of artificial intelligence in South Africa. Um, maybe from your, your, your point of view, uh, I mean, would you share the, the same uh, or similar sentiments uh, with, uh, with this group in terms of uh, uh, the adoption of artificial intelligence and the challenges that uh, uh, really executives face in terms of applying uh, tech, I mean, AI within their businesses? Sure, great question. Um, so so I see, I, I've, I've sort of noticed a few challenges, yeah. some of which touch on what you mentioned. Um, yeah. in, in no particular order, the thing that stood out for me the most, especially in yeah. like our engagements with clients, is yes. actually around like the, one of the biggest barriers is knowing exactly what AI is and being mm -hmm. able to socialize this value with the rest of your organization. And if you think about like large corporates specifically, um, it's, it's a really challenging thing um, for an executive to go and put a budget together to form a data science team or an AI team if you don't know what's the potential value that you're going to get. Because, you know, your first thing is always like ROI. But AI yeah. is such a by by definition it's like uncertain and like you know so so there's a bit of risk involved there and so what mm -hmm. we found is that um even once you've put the money in place right the the rest of the organization needs to know what it is you need to demystify buzzwords you need to you need to talk about potential use cases and you need people who are going to try and champion these conversations so first well one of the barriers i've noticed is basically let's call it ai education and awareness Right, okay. and and this yeah. is also what I think, um, mm -hmm. and and I haven't had the I haven't had the opportunity to you know work much abroad, but with like if I compare South African clients to like our Dutch clients, um, there is a gap in what yeah. AI is right and how it can be applied. 
The second thing is maybe less, like I, I haven't experienced that cost is necessarily a barrier, mm-hmm. um, but uh, you'll find this, I think, in every other AI data article that you read, but it's like um, like data quality and infrastructure is a big, mm-hmm. big barrier. And the reason I say this is because following on from, you know, as an exec, you want to see ROI. Um, the difficulty becomes how do you get your team to move now from building a POC to actually turning something into a, a production model or a yeah. system that is being used by users. That's really hard. And you only mm-hmm. get there when you've got a bit of platform maturity, right? So if you've got some like legacy systems that don't support the way AI tech is built nowadays, you're going to run into challenges there. And then as an exec, you're going to be like, well, I put a couple of million down to fund this team, but this team have been running for two years and all they have is a whole lot of proof of concepts to show. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think like platforms, a big barrier. Yeah. Um, and then you touched on skill. So skill is mm-hmm. an interesting one, which uh, perhaps I've got different views from people. I think like in South Africa, yeah. um, I think the skill is there and I think the skill is getting better and better. Um, if I like we do a lot of like, like sort of core to what we escape AI do is we, we try and hire young. Right. Mm-hmm. And we've seen like incredible growth of these young, you know, raw talent that either just out of university or have been working for maybe one or two years. Um, but like the, the pipeline is there. I think yeah. you just got to like as a company, make it part of your culture to nurture that talent. Um, mm-hmm. Because this is maybe like a, a possible segue into Moonshop. But just so you guys know, like the entire Moonshop platform that we've built has been built by a team that at the average age is like 26 years old. And I think that's amazing. So mm, it goes wow. to show that I think the talent is there and I don't think skill is a barrier. Oh, okay. That's a good answer, Adit. And it's so good to hear that because we hear about the digital divide, which I think is a massive reality in our country. If you think of most of your young people, especially the rural area, young people, um, lack of internet access, lack of education. But And then just to your point, and, and I mean, this kind of talk and, and some of the previous recordings uh, since Ellen and I did, is there are so many people doing incredible things. I mean, we don't have to always look at Silicon Valley. Yes, they've got the scale in the market or, or Europe for that matter. But we have exceptional entrepreneurs and exceptional skills in this country. I think it's it's about scaling it. What I like about what you said about nurturing, uh, Adet, is, and, and over the years, even before I started working in the AI and smart automation space, I think you get youngsters coming through the ranks who are so smart, but they don't have the life skills yet. And and then they land in this big corporate, which is like a dog id dog world, which I think kills their spirit. And I think part of that nurturing is also, it's not just the, the technical nurturing, is is how do you live life? How do you learn what to ignore? How do you learn how to deal with people with egos and stuff? So, so I'd love to to maybe as as, as uh, this question, and then I'll I'll give to to Zanzeli for for the last question before we're done. Just the, maybe because I think this will be very valuable for a lot of our viewers. How do we nurture these skills if we if we remove the the technical aspects? How do you get them to be young people who can handle corporate and people's egos and narcissism? And politics and all that stuff just because i'm sure as, as a young person you also went through that this shocking experience of this apsa or not even apps any bank any big corporate you know it's it's daunting would you say what what do you what would you help young people with in dealing with these things yeah great question man and it's something i think about all the time um so look it's it's firstly important to know that it's not an easy thing to nurture like the non-technical stuff um but you have to be you have to be deliberate about it Okay, so in the same way that you would go and spend money, for example, to upskill your team in AWS, like I think you should have the same mindset to say, um, I want to dedicate time and possibly resources to getting my team, my young technical talent to build up the the non-technical skills. So for example, what we do internally is like we 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 run this, we work on this four-day work week. And Fridays is dedicated purely to just training and development. Um, but with the training and development, we, uh, we we work on like technical training, but also a lot of non-technical training. And what facilitates the non-technical training, and this, this is what I do see as a requirement, is 
you do need you do need senior guidance. You need people who have been through it. Um, because I can't go and preach resilience yeah. to someone younger if I haven't been clapped around myself in the past, right? Um, yeah. And so I think that you've got to have people who have worked for, for a while or at least have had real life experiences. And then the second thing is just hearing other people's experiences is not good enough, right? Um, which is why you need to get your people to be hands-on working for other people. Now, now, I guess in our case, like consulting being the way it is, um, you work for other clients. Uh, we at least are able to give our young talent exposure to the challenges. And so they deal with some really tough stakeholders and things like that. Um, but yeah, to, to just summarize, it's you got to be, I guess, conscious. You got to have people who have been through those battles to share their battle stories. And then you must put your people to fight their own battles as well. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, that's, the, that's the way I see the journey. That's a good answer. Good stuff. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I did. Uh, I think, given the 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 smart technology, I don't know era or era. <laughs> um, I think there's no doubt that uh, every business function is going to be affected or disrupted by the uh, smart technologies or artificial intelligence. Um, I know that you mentioned earlier about uh, the importance of uh, infrastructure, the platform, um, and so on. But what advice can you give to maybe a small and medium-sized enterprise who want to uh, adopt these uh, smart technologies? So where should they begin? Uh, what, what function should they maybe focus on to, to begin their journey? Okay. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot to this question, Zenzele, but I can yeah, try and talk yeah. to it from like uh, some of our clients who are sort of uh, small to mid-sized businesses and they're trying to get onto this journey. So um, to be very practical about it, I think if you're a small business, you must avoid licensed software as far as possible. Uh, maybe some people will debate me on this, but I would say like, don't go, don't, don't look for like enterprise grade yeah. things. Um, Try and find as much off the shelf as you can. Um, and I think like nowadays the, the cloud providers are, are great for that. Um, yeah. So for example, from a machine learning perspective, if yeah. you go and use AWS or Azure, you've got a lot of these models off the shelf that you can use. And then you just, your, your costing is relatively low. Mm. Um, and that might be cheaper for you to get your minimum viable product out there compared to you going and hiring you know, like a senior data scientist who would build this thing for you from scratch. Yes. So I think it's adopting an incremental approach to say, okay. I'm going to try and use as much free stuff as I can, um, get, my, yeah. get my stuff out there, establish my product or my service, yeah. and then from there, just start to organically grow. I think that's okay. one, one sort of approach, yeah. Okay. So in other words, you, you start small and then you you expand uh, to maybe other functions or get into other platforms or uh, AI systems that are suitable with your organization as you grow. Yeah. Okay. I, I okay. Just, a, just yeah. a quick comment on that. It's very important yeah. that like, you know, that like AI tooling is becoming very democratized. Mm. And so that means that out there, there is so much that is available off the shelf. Eventually, yeah. yes, you're going to have to pay, but try and see how lean you can be in the early stages. Okay. Uh, All right. I did, uh, wow. Yeah. Sorry, Zanzela. Just quickly to say this, uh, and I love, uh, I look forward to editing and looking at this video again because there's so many yeah. nuggets of wisdom that you've shared. You know, they say that experience is what we get when we don't get what we want, and nothing beats mm. experience, even if it's bad experience. And I just want to, just before I give to over to Zanzela, I want to say thank you for doing good work thank you for inspiring young people and just to encourage you to keep on going and, and make us proud in south africa and do big things and i look forward to follow your work uh, thank you so much um, thank you thank you han and uh, thank you so much i did uh, you know for you for your time and uh, you know sharing with us uh, you know your your thoughts on the adoption of uh, artificial intelligence and the wonderful work that you do uh, we are grateful for 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 spending time with us yeah thanks guys i really appreciate it and uh, i would love to chat more but i know that we've got a time limit but thanks for having Absolutely. me um hopefully at another time we can talk about 
moon shop in more detail. I've got some fun love, stories love to share that. with you guys. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.